Livingston coming to you live from Console HQ again. And today uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, all things cloud navigation and admin. So it's especially important for those people that have just moved across uh, to Console Cloud. I'm going to take you through all the basics and get you started in the system. That's right. Cool. And if there's anything you see here as well that you want a bit more information on, we do have this course available in our Nebula online training. So feel free to head over there. This is really a high level for everyone to get you started. Cool. Let's jump in, eh? All right, let's do it. So the first thing we're going to look at is our dashboard and essential navigation to cloud. So what you're going to see when you first log in is basically everything of a snapshot of today. So when I'm looking at my dashboard, starting from the top, I can see any changes happening in the system. So I've got my product updates here as well. And then scroll down, I can see my current render is, what inspections I've got, what's coming up compliance, insurance, etc. So you really get a snapshot of your day, of what's going on. And all that's hyperlinked to um, different areas as well. So you jump straight into a property um, or straight into those workflows from here too. And so you've also got um, your portfolios up here. So if you are portfolio based, you can uh, drill that down and adjust yours. Or if you want to see everyone's, you have that option there. Up in the top right as well, it's got all your user profiles where you can change anything there. If I click on that, that pops out so I can change my name or email address if needed and my signature as well. You can provide cloud feedback. You can also refer cloud to a friend um, and then of course if you need to log out, that's all there too. Then you've got your navigate your notifications, sorry. So new notifications will come up if there's any maintenance that's been logged through the tenant app, if there's any intentions that's come back through your lease renewal workflow, which you'll find out more in our next uh, live. We'll go through in a bit more detail of the workflows and things there. And you've also got your communications, and this is where all your emails sit. So you'll actually be able to see from here what's been sent. Um, and then also if they've been opened and so on as well, you can click on them to see the detail of that email or SMS, filter down and things like that too. And going across, you've then got office documents, tasks, and also your help menu. So if you wanted to start live chat or if you needed any kind of help, you can do it from there as well. And then of course search. So if you're looking for someone in the system, typing it in, and then you've got all your feedback from that. Then on the left, we've got your menu. So just like most systems, your menu items are all located here. And you can see it's broken down into the different topics. So going through your properties, through uh, each type of property, and then of course people are all your contacts or clients. So owners, tenants, creditors, contacts, Workflows, you heard me talking about that earlier on the dashboard. This is where you can access those inspections, if you're looking for maintenance, what lease renewals are coming up, etc. That's all, all available in there. Um, and as well as your accounts, so anything accounts related, so this is to do with receding or with disbursements, bills, mm. payments, etc. That's all available in there. Insights are your reporting, which you'll see again in a later live. And then you've got all your settings as well down here. So a bit of a snapshot. If you do have multiple offices as well, you can change your offices through the name up the top. So just clicking on that and then choosing which office it is that you're wanting to log in on. Cool. Thank you. So that's all your sort of basic navigation and getting in and getting used to the system. That's it. Um, I might actually take uh, everyone through the office setup and a couple of settings and adding new users and things like that. So first we're going to have a look at, if we go to our settings uh, menu and then we click on office. So in our office, this is where, um, where you set up all your office details and things like that. There's also a few settings in there. So to get you started in cloud, um, you'll probably find a lot of this information has already been done for you already. So we, we do a lot of this when we onboard you. Um, however, you can come in here at any time and change. So that's things like contact details, uh, addresses, uh, your logo, and all that sort of information. You can also set up things like your owner portal. You can put a logo on there for your agency and things like that. Um, some operating types, little things like that. And also things like email sending, SMS. There's a few little options around that where you can turn off and turn them on. Um, some other little settings such as rent arrears, the calculation, you'll probably find most, most of the time it'll be a daily calculation is the most common one we've seen. Um, there's also an option there to change for full rent calculation periods. 
Um, a few little extra maintenance settings, so like showing key key numbers on work orders and things like that. So you've got your tradies uh, with that information. And we do have a fraud detection um, service as well that's available to turn on. So that's really some basic office settings, for that, especially for those that are getting started or um, setting up their business, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, the next one is our banking. So that's a really key area. So in here, obviously, this stuff would have been set up when you migrated to uh, Console Cloud or when you migrate to Console Cloud. And this stuff really just holds the information for your um, your own sort of fee account. So that's your general account for your agency. And of course, your trust account, things like that. You also have some options uh, for your ABA details, uh, that sort of information. That's your bank file that you upload uh, for um, when you do your disbursements and things like that. Um, there is some little options here which I really like um, in the back, which I think are really important. So we've got this consolidate uh, payments. So this um, consolidates all your payment files, all your lines in your ABA file into one. And we also have some statements. So depending on your owners uh, and what they prefer or how you sort of work in your agency, you do have some options here to change the way your statements um, will look to your owners and things like that. Um, our gateway customers, um, you'll be using so gateway people that are coming to cloud. So it doesn't matter what time you move over to cloud, you'll have one statement um, in cloud. So that that's our external financials and things like that. So it'll include one statement for your customers. So no two statements from two different systems. Um, we also have some delivery options some report settings if you want your end of month trial balances, and of course some uh, bulk receiving options. So you'll see here, we do have an option to turn off matching of part payments. So again, these are it's fully customizable depending on how your office operates. Okay, and what about users? So important part, this is where you invite people to your office. So you've got a new staff member, or you're setting up your users for the first time. You'll see here in the settings and users, there's a little invite user option. And what this will do, it'll open up and it'll ask you what is the user's information and what level of access. So you can see here the standards, standard level of access, property manager, uh, trust account and office administration. Again, it's completely dependent on your office who you provide what level of access to. You'll also notice these little tick boxes, which I think is really important um, for people that um, you know, to give some more sort of customizable options. So if, for example, you don't want the trust accountant person to reverse transactions or do uh, reconciliations, etc., you can turn that off or turn that on sort of thing. Um, one little last thing in the settings that I think um, is super important, agency fees. And uh, that's obviously how we get paid. <laughs> so <laughs> we need to make sure these are right. There's a few little bits and pieces with agency fees that you'll um, that you need to know before you get started as well. So obviously in this setting, this is where we set up our agency fees. So what essentially what we do is we're setting up all our agency fees to begin with, and then we apply it to each owner's management agreement. So that means um, I can customize it in that second step as well. And you'll see that when we go and create a new owner and management agreement uh, in a minute, that um, it'll come up on there as well. So I'll just take you through your basic agency fees. So adding new, um, pretty straightforward option. You can see here there's a number of different incurred on or scheduled uh, options around. So you can do on first rent received, so that's for your letting fees, things like that, every rent for your rent commission and things like that. Um, there is a couple little options which I really like is the maintenance payment and inspection. So those that do charge a little fee, um, you've got the option to add that per maintenance and per inspection. Um, and of course, there's a few lease renewal, on demand. On demand's good. Uh, I like the on demand fees. That allows you to charge it as you need to. So it's not a fee that happens automatically. Mm -hmm. It gives you a charging option. It might be for like your court fees. Yeah, court like fees that. is a good example. Um, yeah, so that's, and obviously clicking on these different ones, you'll see that what comes up will change down here. So when is it charged on? If I choose bill payment, that'll be different and it'll be charged against which owner. And of course, these are assigned to our dissection, which is essentially our account codes mm -hmm. and that. Cool. Perfect. No worries.
right. Well, let's now take you through a little bit of the setup. So you've gone through your office settings, you know how to click around and where to find your way. So now let's dive into creating some assets. So first creating a property. So one thing that you can do from your dashboard as well, you'll see this little plus button and that's where you can jump straight into create different things. So it might be to create a property, tenant agreement, etc. So from here, I can click create property or from the left hand side, I can choose to jump into my property view and choose add new from the top up here. So you'll really be guided by the fields as you start entering properties in, so or any kind of data really, you're just kind of going through and entering what you know. You've got a bit of a, um, a Google search that happens for you as well, so you can click on the address as it pops up, you can add any unit numbers or anything additional that needs to happen here, building, location, etc. And then you've got your property reference as well. And then the use of it. So is it residential, commercial, is it a house unit, etc. You can also add your electricity meter number and any additional information. And like I was speaking about before, portfolios. You can also choose to assign this to the portfolio that's, um, that's required, or you can leave that one unselected if you don't have portfolios set up. And then save and view. So I've created my property now, and from here you can see a really good snapshot of all the different information you can actually add to that property. So I can see on the right I can add a photo, and there's lots of additional features as well that I can start adding. If I choose an add feature, I can put in my bedroom, bathroom, parking, maximum number of tenants, um, if there's pets allowed. So this really helps, especially if you've got, you know, there's high turnover in property managers and you've got a new property manager coming in. Um, it gives them a good snapshot into the property. So um, good for advertising and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Um, adding any access information, so if you've got an alarm code or anything else. Now, with cloud software, I do believe in some states, you can't actually add the access, the alarm mm. code. Onto your, yeah, for your tradies and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right, onto yeah. your tradies. So you just want to be aware of when you are putting that detail in, that can come across to your work orders and things. And remember back in that settings... Uh, in your office settings as well, those mm -hmm. maintenance options, so that will turn on or off those That's things correct. as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's important. Perfect. Yeah, sorry, Anne. Support <laughs> <And then laughs> so, that out, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And then you can check your keys in. Obviously, you don't have any keys right now. I'm just first setting it up, or you might, I don't know. Uh, and then any tasks you might want to create as well. So if you are pod-based and you do need to create some tasks and assign it to different members in the office, you can create them from here. And that comes back to when we're looking at our top right into our tasks uh, screen as well and then you can see your owners and tenants we don't have any against them yet but you'll see them from that top screen too and any insurance and things can be added here as well so my compliance if I want to add some compliance it might be that the the property has a pool or it might be for smoke alarms mm -hmm. you can keep track of all of that here and assign it to a creditor so then you'll actually know when that compliance is coming up for renewal you can work through the compliance work and workflow um, which allows you to do that, add certificates and do it in, in bulk um, and save you some time as well. Yeah. So it's nice and easy, easy breezy to go time. through. Time, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Says every property in a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so from here as well, you've got your quick access where you can add notes, add a form. So that would yeah, be great. taking you to REI if you're wanting to add any additional forms there. Um, files, maintenance, compliance, ins inspections, etc., can all be added through there as well. If you need to edit the property, just doing it through the ellipsis tool. And if you need to make it inactive, we wouldn't be at this point, but you have the option to jump back into it there. Awesome. And you can be guided through as well, through all of those tabs. You've got all the different um, information that comes through as you're working on the property. It'll all come through there. All right, so let's say we so said we've won a new management agreement. So now I'm going to onboard my owner. And I'm going to create a management agreement. So obviously that conversation's happened. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and just quickly walk through creating a new management agreement. I'm going to highlight those really important areas like the agency fees that we talked about as well. So I'm going to click add and back to what uh, Emma's point was, the property page here gives you that little flow. So you'll, you'll notice on this page when I add an owner, it'll start popping up with things like um, the application workflow, which and little other things, there's lease renewals, all sorts of things will start to appear on this page, which is I find really helpful for me, like when managing, um, you know, people, because there's a lot of people and a lot of things going on in the world yeah. in general. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just one little part, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go add ownership. 
and I am going to, the address is already in there, so that's the existing address. And then the property reference, so that's already in there. Any of that information is already populated. I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, our contact, so I'm going to say we've already, we already have this person as a contact. They're an owner of a different property. Sorry, Emma, I'm just going to use your name. That's my owner's name. You've bought a new property. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, good time to buy. I'm going to manage it for you. <laughs> good luck. <Yeah. laughs> um, you can add one really important thing here is obviously with properties and investment properties, multiple owners, so you can have as many owners as you need on here. Um, and we can split that funds up the way we disperse it to those owners in the next sort of step. So I'm going to go save it next. We've added our contacts, the owner. Now we're creating our agreement. So we've already obviously discussed this agreement with the owner and we're just putting it in cloud so we can start managing this property and, you know, advertising, etc. cetera. Um, obviously your references. Now this is where we were talking about the agency fees. So our agency fees essentially is what our agency receives. That's our money. Dollar bills. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. So we're going to, what we're going to do here for this this owner, so we choose what happens per owner. So we're going to um, uh, tick what applies to this owner's management agreement and this owner. Yeah. So what, in a sense, what we could actually do, if this owner has already five properties with us, we might waive the, the fee on the sixth property or something like that, or we might reduce it. So we can actually turn it off in here, or we can reduce it by changing these values here. Yeah. So I'm going to say letting fee, rent commission, sundry, I'll turn this agents, actually I'll leave that on for now. Routine inspection, we won't charge them, we won't charge them for lease renewals. We'll do the statement fee, um, we'll leave the court fees on. Um, leaving on demand fees ticked in the owner agreement as well is really important because what it does, they're not scheduled to come out at any time. It just allows you to um, click charge when you need to. So if we're, we're going to tribunals and stuff like that, yeah. we can use that at any time, it's not gonna charge it. So you turn it on so it's always available. Yeah. Um, this owner has approved me to spend up to a thousand with verbal approval and our disbursement. So I, again, uh, we might have talked about this in a previous session. Disbursement is completely up to you. You can disperse as many times as you like within a day, within a month, within a week, whatever. This is setting the frequency. So if you do have a preferred, so say you do it monthly or fortnightly, you might set this and I've already discussed that with the owner. I'm going to put weekly for this. We disperse weekly as an example. Um, next sort of section is how we split our payments up. Um, any BSB fields or uh, bill codes within cloud will automatically verify as well. So it won't accept uh, incorrect codes. It's another little checkpoint, I think, which is really great. Mm. Um, just picked a random bank and the random number. Uh, any additional information, and of course, we can assign to a portfolio, like we said before. And you'll also notice this little show other documents. So if we want to show, uh, things like inspection reports and stuff like that on the owner portal. We can leave that turned on. So you can see here now it's triggered a workflow to say, hey, there's an active tenancy application. All it means is there's no tenant attached to this property. Okay, so I'm gonna use an existing tenant. Danny Dog. Danny Dog. And we're gonna go next, he's our tenant. Again, we're creating a reference. Again, um, I'm just making it up. I'm going to enter in the lease start date. So this is a new uh, lease start. I'm just going to enter it as today. You'll see the inaugural lease already uh, copies for us. Uh, rent to, no part payments have been paid already. They're not receiving any Centrelink, uh, any money like that. This one's a residential, so we're not going to use, and again, some residentials will do rent invoices as well, but that's for our commercial. So. We'll do a whole other, I think, session on commercial yeah. and what that functionality means and creating commercial leases, etc. Mm -hmm. um, same with our monthly month, a uh, recurring monthly, recurring monthly outgoings. <laughs> um, that's another, obviously, commercial. You can also use it. So if you've got regular invoices for your residential properties. Mm -hmm. Absolutely use that as well. Yeah, you can choose your dissection yeah. in there. So if you have something set up like a gardening service that you might be doing with that tenant, um, you can actually set that up as an outgoing. Yeah, like. cool. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our bond, bond reference. Uh, if we've already paid some rent, we can put it in there. Um, 
if our bond is to be expected uh, as direct debit, so our Victorian customers, that's uh, especially handy for you guys. That'll allow you to see it as uh, when you reconcile, stuff like that, yeah. as receipt, as our uh, direct debit, sorry. And our uh, reference number for Denny Dog, so this is where, um, obviously, when we're receiving and tenants are transferring money into our trust account, we want them to use this reference number. Mm. Go one step further and use sign your tenants up for console pay. Yeah. Um, I recommend because what that'll do is it'll do all the matching and references for you. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about keeping track of references. What an easy reference um, that I've used in the past is the tenant's mobile number. Yeah. So I find that really helpful. Um, last little option. So we've got the option here to schedule the initial inspections. I might just do that. Let's just say we're going to do the um, first inspection three months. Oh, actually, here we go. We're going to do our routine, sorry. Our first one we might do in two months' time, and then we might do recurring for three months. Again, this is optional, so I don't have to do this. I'm just doing it because I like to do this uh, in the beginning. And our console pay, we have the setup option. I'm going to save that. And again, I'm going to go back to that property. There's a lot of links within cloud. Any blue areas is a link. So it'll go to the owner, the manager, uh, so the tenant and whatnot. So you can see there, tenants in there. We also have other little things like payment information, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And our rent calculator's popped up now that we've got a tenant. Perfect. Cool, so I've talked for enough. <laughs> talked <laughs> Emma's ear off for a little bit, so I might actually. Well, a nice little hack yeah. as well, uh, on the back of that and talking about links. If you ever mm -hmm. wanna have two windows open at a time, you might just wanna check something and own a detail ah. and still be okay. in the property. You can hold control on your keyboard okay. and then hit the link. Let's hit my tenant, Danny Dog. And then that's going to open a new little window. Ah, for you. So, so that's you can popped actually, up yeah. two different screens. That's right. So then you're not closing out of one or going into different screens without or losing where you're at with the other one. So it's a little that's hack. Handy, yeah. it? What about our key? Sorry, question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing we didn't sort of talk about was we entered this information in our keys, but I really like this key check in and check out. Yeah. So. Um, if you are using a key system and you have key numbers, etc. So one little thing you can do from this area is you can check in and check out keys. So you can see here, I can check out the key. Let's say for example, I'm going to do my first inspection. I'm gonna check it out, um, routine. If I can keep track of that sort of thing. So that keeps the record of all your keys and I can filter that through my properties list. And I can filter, um, say for example, I'll just move over there now. What keys have been checked out? Yeah, yeah. so keys checked out is in that little filter in here. Perfect. And those filters, yeah, so we'll talk about filters and buttons well, and buttons links and everything a lot. You'll get yeah. sick of us saying that sort of stuff. The, the, the key checkout's yeah. great because it just gets rid of that key book for those of you who are still using those key books. That, yeah, that's and what you can do here, you, you do have a little shortcut to check in and check out keys yeah. as well. Perfect. Thank you guys, that's all we've got time for today. We hope you got something out of today's session. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments down below. We'll stay online for a little bit longer and uh, try and get back to you by then. Of course, and we'll be back with more information about workflows and some more tips and tricks for those of you who are new. Um, and again, you can check out the Nebula course to make sure if you want to see this in more detail then um, go over to Nebula and check out the courses as well. Cool, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and also our join our Console Insiders Facebook group. Thanks, guys. Oh, we'll see you.